So I want to make a bold claim, but I think it's true. This cop will go down in history as the cop that killed 1.5 degrees. It is not true that 1.5 degrees has been kept alive by this cop. It's not even on life support as far as I'm concerned. The analyses of the Climate Action Tracker and the UNEP Emissions Gap Report addendum are clearly showing that when you take into account what is realistically offered by this COP, then we are heading for closer to three degrees. And it is no longer possible to let them credibly get away with saying that that's a way of keeping 1.5 degrees alive. When I read the draft agreement the other day, I was actually shocked. I've got to admit it to you. I, I'm, I feel almost scandalized about myself to say that because I've been warning for months about how ineffectual this COP was going to be. But even I wasn't expecting something as, as vapid as the actual document. There's basically nothing in it. Nothing by way of commitments. All it says is we want to try and do this, that, and the other in the future. It is, it is simply an exercise in kicking the can down the road. That's it. And given that, we must conclude that 1.5 degrees is no longer credible. And this is, a, this is a terrible thing to have to say. But I think it's nothing but the truth. So, because of the recalcitrance of a substantial number of countries, COP26 has failed us, and it has failed our children who are left begging for their lives. And in the light of that, I want to raise a couple of uncomfortable questions. First question is this. Yeah, sure, we can point our fingers at the fossil fuel industry, obviously, and at the countries failing to show leadership, and there are other villains as well. But what about our own role in this? Does it actually make sense to be part of a process which is so direly off the pace? Are those of us who have been strong critics of this COP, of the COP process, of the recalcitrance of those countries and so forth, are we nevertheless in some sense legitimating the process by way of being here, even as we sit here in this press conference? I'm not honestly sure what the answer to this question is, but it seems to me that we have reached the point where we need to ask a, a question like that. We have reached a point where we need to no longer assume that taking part in this can-kicking exercise actually makes sense. And my second uncomfortable question is this. Well, if there's anything right about my first uncomfortable question, well, should there be further elements to this can-kicking exercise? Should we be all, be all assuming that, well, of course, there'll be a, a COP27 at Cairo and then a COP28 and so forth? Is that also now potentially part of the problem rather than of the solution? Should there be more COPs? It will be said in response, but look, I mean, the COP process may be dire, but it's better than having no process at all. And it does at least supply some kind of legitimacy in international law to claims from protesters in, in courts and so forth. But we, what I'm saying is we have to make an honest assessment. Do the benefits at this point actually outweigh the costs? Would it be better to say it's not one minute to midnight, it's not minute, it's not midnight, it's five past midnight. The COP system has failed, arguably it was designed to fail, it never had any sanctions built into it as for example the Montreal Protocol did. There was never any way of enforcing anything that's been happening these last 25 years. Should it, should it actually carry on? So that's my second uncomfortable question. And my, now my conclusion. If you think that anything that I've said is true, then we must take the first steps of fully claiming our agency and no longer outsourcing it to governments and to a process 
who are clearly not intending to use it to save us. And what's the implication of that? Well, right here in Glasgow, we need to find some strong way of asserting that. We need to find some strong way of asserting that we recognize, I'm going to use a bit of sort of copy language here, that we recognize that it's five minutes past midnight, that we recognize that we acknowledge that our governments are not planning to save us, and that we intend to take back the power that they have abdicated using. And what that means in very small micro terms, it seems to me, in the next couple of days as this COP comes towards a close, is that not just outside the blue zone, but inside the blue zone, we should consider protesting. We should consider walking out. We should consider joining those who are outside the exits. We should consider joining those who are going to be protesting in London on Saturday. We must mark and narrate this infamous moment in human history, the moment where 1.5 became consigned to history and where it became clear that no one's coming, no one's coming, no one's coming to save us.